You too! What is up? Let's not waste any more time than I already have. I know that was probably the best intro you ever seen, but today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own commitment edit type of template or next chapter type of edits because I got this request a lot. So I think this one's going to help you guys out. Uh, it's going to help you out greatly, I'd say, but it's not too hard to do. And uh, yeah, let's just hop right into it. Make sure you guys drop a like, sub up to the channel. If you're new, we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody that's been showing love. It means so much to me. And let's hop right into this tutorial. Bow! All right, we're going to go through this step by step. All right, so you guys aren't going to be questioning anything at the end, hopefully. Hopefully. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is open a new a new uh, photo or a new grid, whatever you want to call it. And I use 1080 by 1350. The reason I do that is because it's max Instagram size. And that's usually what people post their next chapter slash commitment edits on. Um, and then for the resolution, it's 72 pixels per inch uh, I just really like this one because it's mainly for for Instagram and stuff like that it's not for print if you're gonna go on and print these out I don't even know why you print these out or anything but that if increasing the resolution is more for printing so keep it at 72 all right simply put and now the next thing that we're gonna want to open is our basketball floor because uh, this is gonna be a basketball floor edit um, you can do different types of edits I can show different variations in the future but for right now we're gonna do basketball and this is the basketball floor I usually use on literally most of my edits that I do for a commitment. So you're going to just click on that lock layer to unlock it. And then we're going to press control C and we're going to, we're going to paste this into the, uh, we're going to paste this into our, our working, our working grid. And don't even be, be worried because I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys the keys to all of, all of these pictures. All right. So the next thing that you want to do, want to do after you center it is you're going to want to distort it. So you right click when you're in the transform and you're going to click on distort and then just bring it down. Just like you kind of just got to guesstimate, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of guesstimate what, where you want it to be. Okay. And then after you do that, add a little gradient. So the gradient the layer mask is right here. That's what you're going to want to do first before adding gradient click on that layer mask then G is the shortcut for gradient or you could just go over to this tab right over here and select the gradient but yeah I just memorized that so and you're gonna want to keep it on this right here right this selection of the layer mask not the ellipse layer mask not any of these extra ones right and black to white is because black hides white reveals so you want black on top and then you're gonna paste that you're just gonna draw a line you're just gonna draw a line somewhere that you think is fitting I usually just uh, go right where the black is so I can't really see uh, that that nasty like that, that just looks yeah all right so yeah that's what we're gonna want to do and then I resize it back up a little bit it's all up to you this is this is personal preference but I'm just showing you guys the way to do it it doesn't mean you have to follow exactly what I'm doing okay so the next part of this is I'll show you guys how I put a texture on there and I actually found a really, really good texture that I'm going to also share. All this will be uploaded in the drive folder so that you guys can get all of this. And this is a Jersey texture. Okay. So I'm going to open up this Jersey texture that I have right here. It's a pretty great texture and I'm going to unlock it from the background. Just clicking on that lock. And then I see this right here off the bat. I just want to get rid of like, the, the letters like okay it's great that you made that but we don't want your letters on there so then I'm gonna press shift F5 right pressing shift F5 and then I'm gonna content aware fill it and it's gonna get rid of that perfectly it better it better be perfect let's see yeah it's pretty good all right so then you're gonna control C copy it again and let's paste it again all right now when you paste that, I control, I can, I transform it and I just make it kind of, kind of just fit like this. All right. So it kind of just fits and then I put it behind. So it's kind of just see how it just uh, kind of is blended in. But now we have this part. So we need to edit the gradient again. You might need to just take some time and really work on your gradient just so you know, and you're comfortable with what it looks like. Okay. So now we're going to work on the platform that the player is going to be standing on all right and with that let's see let's make a duplicate of let's make a duplicate of, of actually let's go back to this picture and let's just crop this part out so let's use our marquee tool 
and let's just crop it out layer mask it and then let's apply let's make a duplicate control J and then let's apply our layer mask okay and now with the marquee tool we're gonna switch to the the circle version of it and let's just hold down shift when you're doing this hold down shift then you just drag okay or you can make an ellipse but you can do either so we're holding down shift and we're dragging let's see let's get a better selection like that and now I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the layer mask button again boom so we have an extra layer I'm gonna control J so I know I have underneath layers that I don't need right now but eventually I'll probably need it and then I'm gonna right click on this I'm gonna press distort and your main your goal of this when you're distorting you can also hold shift down so that you get a straighter straighter line or a straighter like selection but your your goal with this is just uh, making it making it kind of uh, level out okay so making it level out see how this is gonna create a like illusion of a circle well if you don't I'm gonna show you how that's gonna uh, be accomplished so after that then I usually will make a, a duplicate of it all right so control J once again and then I'm gonna put it underneath that right so let's start laying let's start naming our layers so the top is top surface court okay top surface and that is bottom and this is the setup because we're not actually going to use this bottom this is just all for the setup of making this look good all right simply put making it look good so once you're once you're on to that part you're just going to want to come up to here just to, just go to the corners of your uh, selections and make sure you just like you could you could like be really specific and use guidelines and stuff but um, I find that it's just really less time consuming and you can just eyeball it so eyeball the corners right eyeball this corner to this corner and you're gonna go straight across then you're gonna eyeball this corner just just make sure you eyeball it really well because obviously you can you can make adjustments and stuff but all right so once you have that um, I didn't show you guys so once you have that right click and make your selection you don't need a feather on it new selection just make a selection now let's add a new layer so we're gonna add that layer in and now we're on a new layer so let's go to the gradient tool but we're on the paint bucket tool now so you can add it whatever color that you want at first um, you can always add stuff over I'll show you guys how to do that too but see now you're gonna add that over right that color over so that's a layer that's over it now right and now we're just gonna have a color overlay on this on this as well let's just make it the same color black all right so now now you have your platform simple as that I told you guys like it's not it's not too difficult okay so now let's put all this together into a group all right I'm gonna group it and I'm gonna name it platform before I before I transfer it over so control C and let's let's just put our platform on there boom so now we have our platform I'm gonna drop it down uh, to a smaller size maybe it's all preference and it can change during this but you know uh, let's see let's see what do I like right here what do I like I think that looks pretty good okay and now we have both these these two layers together so see you have this part then you have this part and then it just makes a platform okay and you can always ver ver vary between what length you want your platform to be if you want it to be a thick platform go ahead if you want it to be a short one it doesn't matter all right I'm just got giving you guys some of the keys so you guys know what to do because there's a lot of people that uh, won't help you on YouTube but I'm here to do it <laughs> here to do it man and uh, for this one I'm gonna distort it a little bit just so this kind of matches with uh, the the platform because you don't want your you this won't look this won't make sense if you're if you're uh, courts above your platform like that's not gonna look real so you're gonna want it to be all always want it to be horizon level so if you were to just like look at it and and uh, see the horizon level of this like you're gonna be like okay yeah that's raised like granted it's a gradient but like well the main part of it it's like right there so you know it's raised okay 
So that's just what I'm trying to say by that. And now uh, on this one, you could find you could start coloring in this by yourself, or you could try to find a effect or a or a, uh, a skin for the bottom platform. Um, let's see what, what what I can what I can mess muster muster up from my platforms that I have. Okay, I kind of like this one. Let's see. Let's see if this will look good. All right. So I'm gonna control, I already copied it, so I'm gonna control V to paste it. Oh, what? Come on. What's going on? Hold on. I'm just gonna drop it out. Boom. Yeah, that's a quick little tip I can show you guys in a different video. Though. It's, if, cause control doesn't always work on uh, Photoshop. It's kind of annoying sometimes. So there, there. All right, and now I'm going to clip it to it. So either you could right click and say, create clipping mask. Or you could just hold down Alt or Command on a Mac, I believe, and just clip it to it. Okay. Often you're just gonna wanna you're just gonna wanna clip it. And now let's just uh, play around with the colors on this. This should also be clipped to it. You're gonna just wanna play around with the colors. I'm adding Channel Mixer. Monochrome makes it black and white for when you are adding things and whatnot. So. See that right there and that adds us a little like a little texture to it like you don't want it to just be dark or whatever you just want to add a little bit of texture to it and then going on on fourth you could add even more texture but yeah okay so then on the back I what I usually put is committed so I'm gonna write this text I'm gonna show you guys how to blend your text in with the background real quick so and the font that I like to use on this is another danger and either slanted or regular it doesn't really matter to me but so let's just write committed all right resize it make it a bigger font font size or whatever you want to call it all right so there we go that's resized I'm gonna I'm gonna arc it a little bit so it's that little this this little web thing right here to arc it and then you can kind of just choose your arc. Um, 20 is usually probably too much. Nah, that looks okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So once you have that, then you're going to want to control, control it. So copy it on, and then on your on your jersey texture layer, you're gonna control J, right? And you're gonna make a new layer with just this text. So control J, right? And then once you get rid of that, you're not gonna see anything yet. So what you're gonna wanna do, since since you don't see anything, that's only because it's all, only the jersey layer right now, the jersey texture. So it's obviously gonna blend in. So what you're gonna wanna do is, let's name it, committed text. Um, and then what we're gonna wanna do is go to human saturation, drop that saturation down, boom, like this. And let's add channel mixer. Let's put it to monochrome. Let's drop our monochrome down to a little bit and now you're seeing that come through, right? So you could really make this any color. I'm not trying to uh, do any really like big colors right now just so you guys can really see what I'm doing throughout this process. Um, yeah, so there we go right there. And next thing that you're going to want to do is since since I don't have anyone I'm doing a commitment edit for on this, we're going to just use like an NBA player or something. But um, the font that I like to use a lot on my commitment edits is Cool Vetica. And let's go up to the top. We already got the platform uh, already in a group. All right, let's go up to the top. Let's just write a name. You know, this is black and white, so I'm just gonna say Demar Derozan. I I don't know. It, I'm just saying it just cause I know he's not committed anywhere, so just be easy in the comments. All right, just be easy, man. All right, so DeMar DeRozan, right? Boom. And the cool part about this that I like to do is actually I don't want to do his full name by itself. I want to just do DeMar and then I'm going to switch to Rosen. And a really good thing to, for designs to do is use a gradient overlay. So I'll show you guys right now. Gradient overlays are really good because it just like provides like, it just gives it that like kind of more detailed detailed look and it's all this is all kind of just simple stuff that 
can take your uh, edits to the next level so yeah just focus on this type of stuff and you'll be you'll be really good so with the gradient overlay I'm just picking different colors that I think are pretty good for it um, right there I think that looks pretty pretty nice just something nice and clean just like focus on it being just clean you want all your work to just be really clean all right so there we go right there and then for pattern overlays you could add a pattern on if you really want to like if you add a second one but I don't I don't I just deleted the whole thing bro. okay now I'm mad all right let's just add that back quickly I did not submit what I did I'm a rookie, rookie mistakes man all right so boom and then actually instead of stroke let's add a drop shadow drop shadow just add, gives it that little like that little like push of like this looks super realistic see that right there boom damar like what are they what are they talking about damar all right damar derosen and so the next one's going to be derosen right so a little cool thing that i like to do sometimes is kind of flip my gradient overlay so now see how i went from black to gray there so now i want it to be like black to gray but flipped opposite so we're gonna just aim for that so let's go like gray lighter gray right here and we're gonna go even darker and then okay let's see darker oh, okay actually i like that wow okay yeah that looks really good and well we gotta write his name right the rosen okay so we have his name DeMar DeRozan but let's get a picture of him so that I'm not just here like making making up things and not even writing his so I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back after I cut out a picture of him all right boom we have DeMar DeRozan on screen okay so the next step of this is I think I want to discolor some of this just to make it like all fit in that that scale you know what I'm saying it's like just discolor some of this so I just put the hue and saturation down and I'm just gonna drop that down as well this is all personal preference man I'm not gonna tell you guys what you have to do because you don't have to listen to me I'm just showing you guys a simple setup so that you guys can hopefully learn from this you know what I'm saying hope this uh, helps you guys out in in making your own type of uh, design so boom there we have that now on the DeMar DeRozan layer He's not really matching the uh, scenery, if you want to say so. First thing I usually do is I use Topaz Labs to add a skin to the player or whatever the player. Uh, yeah, usually the player, whatever. So I usually go on HDR collection and I'll use Dynamic Pop first. And I always just have that on there, just like Dynamic Pop, right? And then I have Light Pop Smooth. And it just like, like it just makes it look like a lot better. That's what you see on a lot of uh commitment it's just a lot of skins that, that you might just be like i don't get how they did that but after a while you're gonna be like what that's that was mad easy so then i add a duplicate layer because i'm gonna use topaz denoise after to just like kind of just make some of his skin look smoother but when you use denoise you don't want to make things like uh too smooth around the eyes and the face area and the hair because then it just doesn't look like it just starts looking too cartoony okay so Let's go on to noise. And if you guys are, are confused about how I got Topaz, I dropped a tutorial on how to get it. And also, if you're stuck, you know, just let me know and I'll try to help you the best I can. A lot of people just say like they can't get it. I'm just like, I don't know how, but I mean, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But so let's just let's just invert it. So I'm going to press control I to invert it. And then because see now you have that black layer mask right there and then I'm gonna press X to get back on my white because white is gonna reveal in this instance and then let's pick a brush let's pick let's pick a soft brush drop the flow back down and let's just reveal some of this this uh this hair and the face because you you don't want you don't want your uh, hair and face too smooth because it's just gonna look bad I'm telling you all right so now let's do a little bit of shading I'm gonna combine these layers I already know they're good to go so the Marta Rosen right so let's do a little bit of shading now let's add a curves adjustments and let's clip it to them 
let's drop down the curves down here because this is what I'm gonna do for or actually let's not use curves you could use curves if you want but let's use levels I think level is gonna work better for this instance and let's just drop that down right all the way to black oh no you messed up the whole thing no I did not so we invert it again by pressing Control I and then I'm going to just add the shade on the bottom of his feet because it's not gonna be as bright there as the top simple things right simple things all coming together right and then we're gonna add his his undershade under his feet so shade under feet I can just name it shade under feet because I can I can just do that and let's drop the flow down and let's just color what the hell is that oh let's drop the flow down and let's just color under his feet a little bit okay and actually I'm gonna clip it to the platform so that none of that excess stuff starts going everywhere and then I usually put on like soft light and then I'll convert it to a smart object by right clicking and convert to smart object then go to filter blur and blur out some of that shade okay so there we have that and uh, another touch that I like to do is usually add the, the logo in the in the right on here but for right now since we have there's so much that we have like not uh, no space of and it's just like I feel like there's just so much space right so let's just make let's make the space like look better like there's not as much just empty space around the, the edit so I use torn paper brushes um, I'll also link these I'm gonna, I got you guys with all this stuff I'm gonna link all this stuff I promise okay so I move that rotate that brush around and I rotate the brush around and let's just what's going on let's see okay yeah there we go all right so I'm gonna use black to to get rid and so now we have that little rip right there okay and now let's add the shade of the rip so let's add a layer under rip shade I'll just call it rip shade it's so whatever and let's just move that brush let's just kind of line it up kind of line it up pretty well with what's going on there okay and we're gonna add black a black shade underneath just to show like yeah I really ripped okay and once you have that you can just position it wherever you want warp it if you want you know get you can get really creative with all this stuff but you know like I said um, just trying to drop this for you guys uh, real time so that you guys can get an idea of how I how I do my commitment edit so let's go to our blur and our Gaussian blur and let's just uh, blur that a little bit just to show like it's shade and then underneath the shade I like to add a brick layer usually like a that's a it's just like I think it looks like a good touch for our commitment edit. so let's add a brick layer and then hopefully I still have my brick photo let's see yes we do brick wall texture right so let's just unlock that by clicking on the lock layer and I can add my brick layer right wow so so great so we can just distort we can just add a hue and saturation make that dark as well this is all up to you what colors you want to use like I say I'm just here to show you guys kind of how I get these done okay and okay so that brick layer is gonna have like the, the San Antonio logo on there but one last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, I'm gonna create some shapes around his name so I'll be right back once I create the shape and then I'll show you guys how you can can duplicate the shapes around and then change the colors all right so we have our little shape right there that I created all right so just a basic shape don't don't make fun of my shape but I'm gonna show you guys how to duplicate these shapes and kind of just put them around the circle around around the uh, put them around the, the template the platform whatever you want to call it so I, I use a middle line right right there your middle line is up to you where you want to use because um, yeah it's up to you so right there you so you so what I did right there is I put this this little marker it makes you be able to drag your shapes around a rotation so if you just put it right there it's gonna drag because that's the center of rotation but if you move this point 
now your center rotation is on this line so once you drag something it's going to be on that line once again so that's pretty much how you're going to do that and you're just going to copy and it kind of gets tedious i got to find a, a better way to just do it uh to kind of just do it without doing all like like all like this but you know with time it'll happen so i'm gonna add actually a new guideline a vertical guideline and then i'm gonna split it down here so just to make sure i match it up every time yeah i definitely gotta find a new way to do to be doing this but for right now this will work and yeah if you guys have any tips as well for me to do this faster just let me know because i'm always open to your guys suggestions as well this is just something that I learned kind of just on my own. So I never really learned like the fundamental of moving things around the rotation. I kind of just did it, but yeah. Okay. So let's just keep putting that in the center and then moving it about the rotation, right? So once you have everything just pretty good, like where you want it now, you can honestly, you can just merge them together, like just merge them together, right? So now you have all your shape copies, boom, shape copy all together. So now you're gonna control J, copy it. Let's 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 transform it. So flip it about the horizontal, and let's flip it, and let's just match it up in the middle, right? So now you have your whole sec section complete, right? So why not just put that down and put it right there? Now you have all your shapes that you want to use. And for the color overlay, we can change that as well. So let's put it to white. So we're changing that to white, right? Boom, and then. Let's just add a drop shadow of like black, something, something like that, right? And I'm gonna drop the spread down. And gradient overlay, let's see, hold on. Let's make it, before we add the drop shadow, let's add, let's make it just a shape copy of that. So let's add a gradient overlay of this, but we're gonna make it a light one. Let's see, do they got whites on here? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. All right, so that's like an off-white. And then drop shadow, boom. Right there, man. See, guys, it's not too difficult to make these types of edits, all right? And then whatever you want to put up here, you can put. So usually I'll put a lay, uh, usually I'll put a logo. So, all right, let's just go and get a Spurs logo. Spurs logo all right let's get a spurs logo real quick and let's hope that a png doesn't lie to us because you know you guys know the feeling when you get a png and then you actually start moving around and it's not a png it just has a grid Whoo! that might be one of the worst feelings ever okay uh let's go to get let's open up this spurs logo Boom, right here, copy it. Let's go back in. And right above this layer, make sure you're not gonna interfere with these two that are clipped. Um, we're gonna slide that, and then we're gonna tra transform it and move it onto this. And I like to just make it not all visible because I think it looks, looks pretty cool. And then uh, go right click onto the Spurs logo. I'm gonna name it Spurs logo. So right click onto that. And then you're gonna go to blending options and blend it to Blend it to your to your liking. So you kind of gotta play around with these two um, adjustments right here. But just blend it to your liking, and then you're golden, pretty much, you know. And then for ending tips of what you can do. So maybe you want to add a little bit of a little bit more stuff onto it. You know, I'm not gonna go too crazy because I'm just trying to show you guys what I what I usually do. I don't want to uh, have this video be like an hour long of me adjusting things. But I add a little backlight right there, like a little just like backlight effect. So then that's gonna also affect the way that his his body has lighting on it. So I'm gonna add curves, and then I just I just boost my curves all the way up. I just go for it, and then I go on my soft brush, and I drop my soft brush down to a very very low flow because if I just start painting on with that craziness that I just put on there, it's gonna be crazy. So. I'm just gonna make this side of his body just like a lot lighter than the, the other side besides this side because this is darker, but yeah 
pretty much like that and then this is kind of blinding him so I'm just gonna move it over and other things that you might want to do is you might want to add like a logo on the bottom here you might want to add your tag here sometimes I have my tag the at calcoscope there and then color lookups of course always help you know just play around with the color lookups I made a color lookups video so if you guys are uh, interested in any of the ones that I that I use like on my edits on Instagram or anything like that you know you can always utilize those and then with color lookups you can always gradient fill color color lookups so it just like adds another layer of, of uh, density not density but not, what am I trying to say I'm, I'm just gonna stop I'm not gonna say density and then you know it just adds another layer of, of color right that's what I'm really trying to say and then also a good thing to do is add like black right oh, why is that not black add like a black layer but then just have a, a gradient have a gradient of it on the bottom like that like that or something it's up to you all right so yeah guys that's pretty much how you're gonna create your own um commitment at it man it's not it's nothing too challenging um, this is just a simple tutorial. I could go way, way more just in depth with everything, like adding text on the side, text on the top, and all that. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys have a good understanding of how to do this. So hopefully, this helped you guys out a lot. Um, yeah, man, hopefully, it helped out a lot. It's been a blast, like on this journey to 1K with you guys, man. Make sure you guys drop a like on the video, subscribe to me if you're new, check out my Instagram at Calcoscope. And hey, man. Appreciate everybody along this journey. Let's just keep it pushing. Let's keep learning every day because that's what we got to do. Just keep learning every day. And until next time, it's been Council Scope. I'm out, man. Peace.